In this section, I will take you through a quick demo of the dashboard sections in Signals. So in this section is where you primarily plot all your metrics and all infrastructure metrics like host metrics or Kubernetes metrics. So primarily, uh, this section has ways to create new dashboards. And then in each dashboard, you can create multiple panels. So let's go through some of the dashboards which we already have so that it gives you an idea of what are the capabilities you can have. A very basic dashboard is something like a host metric dashboard, which gives you standard metrics like uh, memory uses, disk space, available disk space and things like that. And here you can create these dashboards, like you can specify the tags which you want to provide, a description, a name of the dashboard, and you can also specify uh, something called variables. So these are the variables which you can specify based on queries. And then these will be available here for you to choose as a dropdown. Now, for example, suppose you want to set up a new variable. Now this variables can be set up in different ways. It can either just be a set of options like textbook options, but more often than not, these are generally queries which people want to run so that these queries give you a certain set of options which can be used as variables and then people can use this uh, drop downs here and plot or like the C different types of values available in this dashboards. So uh, as you see, like here we have defined a variable called host name and it has multiple values populated and based on the value which you choose here, this all this uh, metrics change for you, right? Uh, now you can also change the layout of this dashboard. For example, you can sort of move it here and then save layout so that you can adjust the panels which are there based on your need. You can also add new panels here. Uh, so currently we support three types of panels, time series panels, value panels, and table panels. And then based on the queries there, you can uh, write and get values displayed here. We'll get into more details on this in a few minutes, uh, but I just want to share some other features of dashboards. So you can have multiple types of dashboards registered here. So I showed you example of host metrics dashboards. You can also have dashboards around uh, Kubernetes specific metrics like uh, pod memory, pod utilization, etc. And then you can have create dashboards for standard thing like JVM metrics, where you can monitor things like JVM heap, uh, JVM total memory, uh, cache uh, space, etc. Right. So this is really gets very powerful, and you can plot any type of metrics which you want to monitor here. Now suppose you want to create a new dashboards. Either you can create a dashboard here, and then add panels there. So let's just try to create a time series type of panel here. So what you do here is you get a way to create a custom dashboards basically. And basically you can create dashboards based on logs, metrics, or traces. Now anything uh, or any metrics which you are sending by default to us are available here as uh, data points. And then you can for example, plot things like uh, file system uh, capability available and then plot uh, things based on that. You can also use legends here to specify the, or like basically make this dashboards much cleaner to see and, and then uh, plot these graphs accordingly. You can also, so there are like three types of queries which you can write. You can either write to use our query builder uh, to create these dashboards, or you can use something called ClickHouse query. Uh, here it we give you all power of ClickHouse queries to write any type of queries which you want. You can go across multiple data stores and then write ClickHouse queries. And for example, you can write a query which ties across logs and traces and then plot some data here. So you can really uh, use it in a very powerful ways. 
Also, if you are sending metrics in Prometheus format and using Prometheus receivers, you can just write PromQL queries also and we support that. So, so yeah, so these are the three types of queries we support in dashboards. And once you create, suppose a dashboard here, and then you're happy with it, you can just save this as the dashboard, write some certain uh, descriptions here. So let's say file system capacity. And then you can choose uh, a y-axis unit based on what you think is the unit here. Uh, here, let's say the capacity is based on the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, bytes. So we'll just choose this here and then run query so that the y-axis here gets adjusted based on that. And then we can save it and it will save a query in the dashboard. So this is how you can use the dashboard feature and then plot any type of metrics. Creating new alerts in Signals is very simple. You just go ahead and click this new alerts button and this will give you option to create alerts based on different type of signals like metrics, logs, traces or exceptions. Let's try to create an alerts based on traces. So as soon as you click here, you enter the alerts page and the query builder where you can create queries on what type of alerts you want to run. Let's create an alert for spans with more than P50 duration, more P50 duration and see how we can configure that. So we're just filtering based on a particular service, say the customer service, and we run the query, we start getting the count of the alerts. Now let's say we want to set alerts on the time duration of spans, and say we want to choose P50 percentile to set alerts based on that. What you see here is the duration in terms of nanoseconds. So it's 313 millisecond, which is the P50 percentile. Let's try to increase the time interval here for 15 seconds and set a threshold of say 310 millisecond. Because the value is in nano, we have to write it in terms of 310 millisecond million and once you run query you see a thresholds coming up here so anytime your p50 percentile crosses this limit an alert is generated now there are different options on like do you want to show alert when the threshold is crossed or above below etc and also is it do you want to throw alert if it crosses all only once or on an average or other options like this once you have set your alert, you can send an alert name, say above 310 millisecond, and then set a notification channel. Uh, here I will just create the alert rule and then tell you how to set up notification channels. So it's asking if you want to save this alert, and then once you have saved it, you can see that this, this one is created here. So it's as simple as that to create alerts in Signals. The next part is to go ahead and set up alert channels to set up where you want to see the alerts. In Signals, we default by default support Slack, Webhooks, and PagerDuty to send notifications. Webhooks, using Webhooks, you can configure any other alert channels which support Webhooks and then use it to send alerts from signals. As you can see, you can also set more detailed formatting options here, which gives you more options around what was the alert name, what was the status, and maybe some more description around severity, etc. So once you save this alert channel, and then go ahead and select that in the 
alert option alert rule uh, the alert will start getting fired and shown in the respective notification channels